reviewing every single Dragon Ball Z and Dragon Ball Super movie, but I take a shot in between each review. Now, initially, this was going to be two parts, but I got like halfway through, and I felt fine. You'll see by Dragon Ball Super Broly and Super Hero, I probably should have just chillaxed, but hey, we recorded the entire video. If you liked it, make sure you leave a like. Honestly, if you didn't like it, this is a lot of effort and a lot of work. It's over an hour long, and there's timestamps. You can leave a like. It's greatly appreciated. Enjoy it. Dragon Ball Z Dead Zone. Now, this is a very odd movie because it's, it's not crazy odd with how Super did their movies, but with how Z did their movies, this one was like a little filler arc and then turned into a movie at the same time. Garlic Jr. I am willing to bet until Goresh made that name important to a lot of people, most people probably didn't even know who Garlic Jr. was. I'm willing to bet that. Because even sometimes I forget that Garlic Jr. exists and I have a problem with Dragon Ball. <laughs> so, the dead zone. Starts out Garlic Jr. and all of his cronies. They're going to try and kidnap Gohan when Gohan's a little kid. This is around right after Raditz, maybe right before. We don't. It's right after, but you know what I mean. Dragon Ball Z movies are weird. They want the Dragon Ball that's on his hat. Kidnap him, they gotta save him. What I like about this movie is that you get to see Kami, and you get to see Piccolo, and you get to see all these side characters. And Gohan is actually the one that boots Garlic Jr. off into the dead zone. Now, as a villain, Garlic Jr. is actually not that bad. He's really not. Nowadays, he'd probably get like weird treatment, but back then, he got a fair amount of story just for one simple movie. Like, you knew who he was, what his ambitions were, kind of. We don't know who Garlic Sr. was, but that's not important, I suppose. It's a good movie. If I had to give it like a rating, I'll give each of these movies a rating. I'd say a 6.5 out of 10. If you'd asked me 15 years ago, like when I very first got into Dragon Ball Z, or Dragon Ball in general, I'd have probably given it like an 8 out of 10, because it's a good movie. It's not that bad. It's kind of fun. You get to see Piccolo and Kami. Like, there's nothing negative about it. I'm also a diehard Dragon Ball stan, so realistically... Do with that what you will. Alright, to be 100% honest, I almost skipped the world's strongest. Strictly because I feel like these first two Dragon Ball Z movies just don't do the DBZ movies in the proper light, right? They were kind of just trying to find their footing, put some stuff, and then it got kind of crazy starting next. But we'll talk about it. So I'm not a gigantic fan of the world's strongest, strictly because when I watched it, remember I would have been 12. These movies came out in like the 80s early 90s like i would have been like 12 years old and while it was good it's still dragon ball all the voices are different the characters it's like eh. like yeah dr wheelo is in dokkan battle yes basically what it is is that dr wheelo gets freed by his friend uh and they have to they're trying to like take over the world you know the state of dragon ball z plot oh well, but turns out goku is the world's strongest that would that changes a lot in Dragon Ball, <laughs> but that's essentially the world's strongest. So onto the Tree of Might, actually starting a proper point. A Tree of Might starts where Dragon Ball Z movies start to actually feel like genuine movies. It's kind of like an event, a whole grand thing. Yes, again, the first two Dead Zone I actually like a lot more than the world's strongest. The world's strongest is just kind of a weird movie for me, but Tree of Might is when. I actually started getting hype when I'd watch Dragon Ball movies. I don't know why they went with the decision to make Turles look exactly like Goku. I, I, I don't. It's never really bugged me because it's like whatever. And everybody, oh, he's the Goku Black of 30, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, whatever. Okay, yeah, fine, it's whatever. But it's as an actual character and the whole story of it is really cool. So essentially, Turles is a space pirate. That goes around just kind of killing everybody. Taking over planets, all that kind of stuff. It's actually a really good movie if you should watch it. But he plants the tree of might, which grows the fruit of the gods, essentially. And when he eats this fruit, he gets ridiculously strong for that time in Dragon Ball. Obviously, <laughs> I don't think Turles would even hold a candle to even like Krillin <laughs> in like Z. Like late Z, but the Boo Saga type era. But still. He gets ridiculously strong for that time period. Now, you could argue, why did he just keep eating fruits? Like, I don't know. I don't know why he didn't. He only wanted to eat one, maybe two, here and there. 
But he does get a cool strong power boost. Goku goes crazy with a spear bomb. That's why if you play Dragon Ball Legends, or really even Dokkan, there's a lot of Turles characters. Because Turles is actually relatively popular. He's even in Heroes. So if you watch Dragon Ball Heroes, which is arguably good and bad, if you watch that, you'll see Turles pretty often. And it makes sense. This was like the start of the movies becoming movies. Like I said, where it feels like a grandeur type thing. It's a good movie. Highly, highly recommend it. Honestly, 8 out of 10. Honestly. Because I have memories of it. You would probably see a rate it lower nowadays. Because Goku Black did it better. In some aspects, some not. It was you know 30 plus episodes. But... Goku Black did it better, being an evil Goku. Because this guy was just like a doppelganger, and it's like... Again, I don't know why him, Goku, Bardock... I get why Goku Black has the same hair, it's like Goku's body. But why they all had the exact same hair... I don't know. They were trying to do something different, and personally, it worked really well for me. Alright, I'm starting to kind of understand the ordeal I've put up myself. But next up is Lord Slug. Lord Slug is awesome. Like... It's a good movie. The problem is Lord Slug has fallen into obscurity strictly because it's so random. Like randomly you have this Namekian who's crazy powerful and he's like, hey, I'm here for all the Dragon Balls. Now, we all know at this point that Dragon Ball movies take place in like a separate alternate universe. Don't fully know the explanation. There's not really one. A lot of things in Dragon Ball are just like, I don't know, did, did it look cool? <laughs> That's a lot of things in Dragon Ball. You got to understand that going forward with all these movies. With that said, Lord Slug is pretty prominent in the sense, you guys have all heard the fun fact, I'm sure, where when Goku went Super Saiyan against Frieza, Lord Slug came out around that time. And with Goku having to go Super Saiyan with that, they didn't have the official art and everything and what Super Saiyan would look like, etc., but they knew it was going to happen. So you have a thing called False Super Saiyan. Which is what Goku goes into this, but it's basically Super Saiyan. His hair just doesn't go blonde, and I'm really glad. I'm really glad the iconic moment did not debut in Lord Slug. Yes, the movie's fun, and it's okay. It's good. But I'm really glad it did not debut in Lord Slug, and we got the whole Frieza fight and everything. But he does go a thing called Fall Super Saiyan, where Goku's getting bodied. So what it is, Lord Slug comes to Earth, like every other villain that's ever happened in Dragon Ball. Minus how Super does things now. Lord Slug comes to Earth, Goku has to fight him, and da da da, and he go he uses Piccolo's powers from like the 23rd Martial Arts Tournament where he gets gigantic, and Goku's getting his butt kicked, and whatever else, and then all of a sudden magically gets this crazy power, which at that time, again, we weren't as invested in Dragon Ball as it is nowadays, there wasn't the internet, I couldn't hop on Twitter and tweet about Lord Slug. Like, I just watched the movie, and then I went to school, and I talked to my one friend that liked Dragon Ball. I was like, did you see that? And he's like, no, I didn't. And it's like, oh, well, come over to my house, and we'll watch it. <laughs> like, it was a different time. And when the movie came out, it came out even, like, 12 years before I even watched it the first time. Gotta remember that, too. It was back in, like, the 90s. So, Lord Suck is good. Definitely recommend it. I'll give it, like, a 7 out of 10. Every movie, I'm never really gonna give a Dragon Ball movie below a 5. Well, there's one. I'm sure you can guess which one. Excluding Evolution, like the... The actual Dragon Ball movies. Sorry if you like Evolution. I've never met anybody that does, but... Yeah, I'll give it like a 7 out of 10. It's a good movie. You should watch it just so you know who the character of Lord Slug is. But don't go into expecting the the, the level of hype that like something like DBS Broly will give you. Or even like Super Hero. I know Super Hero is a bit you know tumultuous. It's not technically out yet. When we get to that point, I'll give you guys a spoiler warning and whatnot. But definitely watch Lord Slug. It's good. On to the next. For my own sanity, I'm lumping together Cooler, the Re Cooler's Revenge, and the Return of Cooler. So, starts out, right? You see Cooler on a ship, and they're like, yo, Frieza's been defeated. And Cooler's like, how? What do you... There's, there's no way. Like, he hated his brother. Like, they were not friends. But Frieza was... Frieza in Dragon Ball is quite literally the definition of... Of just born with talent. Like, Frieza didn't have... It, it, we, this is established lore at this point. Everybody roasted Frieza in Resurrection of F, which we'll get to. But he literally is the definition of just... He's just meant to be powerful. That's just his background. That's it. Cooler knew that. Frieza was probably stronger than Cooler. Obviously, it was Golden Frieza, yes. But 
Turns out Kool's got a sneaky little form. So he comes to Earth, like everybody else, and the beginning of <laughs> Cooler's Revenge is one of the most joked about parts of Dragon Ball. Because you got Icarus, which is Gohan's dragon. Can we have Icarus back? Do you know how bad I want to see Pan playing with Icarus? Please. Where is Icarus at? Either way. Gohan's dragon, Icarus, is there. Starts out with Piccolo, meditate, and do all this kind of stuff, and then all of a sudden everything pops off. For whatever reason, Krillin and Goku are just, hey, we're going camping real quick, you know? That's what pretty everyday in Dragon Ball, right? And you have Salsa pop up, and Salsa kind of kicks everything off. Whatever, whatever you want to call him. Bowser, Salsa, he's got the same name. Kicks everything off, and he's like, my lord, cooler. We're... We're at the point now, this is iconic Dragon Ball movies, because these are villains that everybody kind of knows. Even external, you've at least seen a picture or a video of them in some capacity. That's kind of where we're at now. Cooler starts out, he's pretty strong, obviously stronger. At this point, Goku can already go Super Saiyan, he already fought Frieza. And I am personally a big fan of the scene where Cooler's kind of destroying everything, bodying the crap out of Goku. And Goku grabs a bird, puts it in his hands, and heals it. Personally, I'm a fan of that. I like it. It's just me. It's just Dragon Ball. I like it. It's fine. A lot of people roast it as like, Goku is Jesus. <laughs> and it's like, no. But I like it. I think it's cool. I'm, I'm fine with it. I, I enjoy it quite a bit. And then he proceeds to body bag Cooler. We know how this goes. Sends him off into the sun, etc. This is one of the few movies alongside Broly where the villain is carried over directly to another movie and their story is continued. Which it looks like DBS Broly is going to have the same kind of thing, just not directly, like he wasn't in Superhero, but like directly, right? Like, whatever. So, then we get to the Revenge, or Return of Cooler, and we're over on Planet Namek. Why are we on Planet Namek? Well, Namek 2. Because it's a Dragon Ball movie. Why not? We're here now. Hopefully you like it. That's how Dragon Ball works. So we're into it. Starts out, you got Go, you got Gohan, Piccolo, Krillin, Roshi. I don't know why Roshi would choose to go, but I like it. I'm here for it. That was a time where Dragon Ball kind of learned that a lot of their characters were so iconic that they could definitely benefit off of that. And I think this movie does that perfectly. Is it cheesy? Yes. Does it end like every other Dragon Ball movie? Yes. But do I stand up out of my chair and clap every single time? Well, no, I don't. But in my head, I'm doing that. Like, I'm like, dude, let's get it. Like, so you have the big Getty star grabs Cooler's body, right? They're like, hey, let's snatch him up. It's a little bit unoriginal because we already had Mecha Frieza, who was a cyborg because Frieza got destroyed, got rebuilt, sent back to Earth, whatever. Met up with King Cold, and you have Cooler, who gets the Big Eddie Star, grabs him, gets rebuilt. He's now a cyborg, but he's like full on a robot. Like, it's not like a cyborg type. He's like a full blown robot <laughs> at that point. It's got some of the coolest scenes because watching where like Goku and Vegeta are talking about how, okay, we can do this, we can handle this, we're Saiyans, we're Super Saiyans. I think of that, yeah, Vegeta's definitely a Super Saiyan at that point. And they're like, we can do this. No problem. And then like 5,000 coolers appear on the mountainside. I love it. It's just so like, all right. And then you have Gohan, Piccolo, and Roshi, and Krillin are just kind of there. Like they're just, they just exist in the movie. But you have Goku and Vegeta have their secondary point that then ends up resolving it. And then they fight the giant brain of Cooler. Basically, it's a big gaty star. But Cooler's pretty much the middle point of that. Like he's taken over, quote unquote. He got absorbed, but he was so powerful he took over. And then it's so cheesy that then Goku just outputs so much power that he can't take it. Everything about it is amazing. Everything about Cooler is just so good. <laughs> like, it's it's lame, but it's lame in the best way. If you're a Dragon Ball fan, you come to love the lame things about Dragon Ball. That's plain and simple it. Like, you come to, like, look at the very, like, stuff that's way over the top, makes zero sense, but you're like, it's dope for some reason. <laughs> that's a Dragon Ball. So, when it comes to Cooler, I'm going to give both of these movies a 9 out of 10. 
I'm going to. 9 out of 10 for Revenge, uh, Cooler's Revenge and Return of Cooler. Easily. 9 out of 10. Super Android 13. Now, 13 is a bit of a different movie for a lot of people, at least throughout the community and whatnot. Because it's either you really like it, or you don't. And that's it. <laughs> Plain and simple. So, Super 13 starts out, Dr. Jarreau's computer has still been making androids without him because it's autonomous. Because Dr. Jarreau was like one of the smartest humans to ever exist. It, the smartest beings. Honestly, when you think about how strong the androids are, that they're able to compete in the T.O.P., that they were able to grow and everything, you think of 17 and 18, Dr. Jarreau is ridiculous. So... You have Android 13, 14, and 15. The movie starts with Goku, who's doing some light shopping at the mall. I think we can all relate to that. Well, maybe not in 2022. Not many people go to the mall nowadays, but we can still relate to that. It starts out, he's carrying all his bags for Chi-Chi and stuff, which, by the way, I don't know how Chi-Chi got all the money because she's always complaining about having money. Goku, you got to go make money. But she's doing a bunch of shopping. And then 14 and 15 attack, which... I don't mind 14 and 15. I like how crazy their designs are. This was around the time where Dragon Ball had kind of hit its peak with movies. Not with the actual series. Obviously, that was Goku and then Cell with Gohan and then Boo. Like, this was the peak for the movies, at least in my opinion, between Cooler, 13, and Broly. And obviously, we're back to that now with DBS Broly really hitting another peak, but we'll get to that later. So, 14 and 15 attack Goku... He's like, what's going on? They go to the secondary place, and you have 13. Now, I like Android 13 before he transforms. I like him after, too, but I like him before because they give him such a distinct personality. Like, you have androids like Aider from way back in original Dragon Ball all the way up to 19. Every android besides 17 and 18 who are relatively similar have such a distinct personality. And I think that's one of the coolest things about the androids. So he's this trucker, he's got his hat and everything. I remember playing Dragon Ball Legends and Android 13 when he came out, him losing his hat was like a cool mechanic. Like that's not even a joke. Like everybody was like, oh my gosh, when you hit him, he loses his hat. I love that. I'm a gigantic fan of that. So the whole entire thing is that this, it built it the same way as how Cell powers up. So Cell required 17 and 18 to become perfect, right? I put that in quotes because he's still lost. Super perfect cell, also lost. Spoilers for you, sorry. It's the same kind of thing. When 14 and 15 get defeated, then 13 absorbs their parts and becomes perfect. You get your iconic shot. You know the shot. Where Android 13 punches Goku straight up. Straight up in the danglers, bro. Like... <laughs> takes him down a notch i love it i just like I, I do like this movie it's definitely not in my favorite movies for sure like it's 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 in the lower end no doubt because the actual movie itself is very cheesy you get trunks and everything you get vegeta going super saiyan there's a lot of really good things about it but realistically it's on the lower end of the dragon ball movies it's just how it'd be <laughs> Unironically, my favorite part of the movie is the very end where it's just Vegeta and Piccolo sitting there. And it's like, is this the end? Yeah. I like humor like that. That definitely appeals to me. So, 7 out of 10. The movie has a lot of good fight scenes. You get where Goku punches straight through 13. And it, it feels like that standard Goku powerful kind of thing. I like it. So... Android 13, 7 out of 10. Still watch it, but don't expect, like, you know, Wrath of the Dragon, Bojack Unbound, uh, Broly, cooler type levels. But it's really, really good. It is good. You'll enjoy it for sure. Initially, I was going to put all the Broly movies together like I did with the two cooler movies. And just kind of be a little cheesy or cheeky about it, right? That was, that was kind of the game plan. But then looking it up, turns out it went Broly. Bojack Unbound, and then Broly the Second Coming, so I can't do that. So, Legendary Super Saiyan Broly. Honestly, re-watching it really holds up. So, I'm a bigger fan of DB... Okay, so I like Z Broly's design better. I do. I do. I like to build up more. 
But as a character, I like that DBS Bro is able to kind of grow a little bit. With that said, there's something just amazing about how gnarly Broly is in the original one. Like, like when he sees all the little aliens, and they're like, that's our planet. And he's like, oh, yeah, that's gone, bro. There's something about that that I just really like. So, starts out. Paragus, which is Broly's dad, comes to Earth. Who would have thought, right? I know. This is another weird movie where it kind of takes place in between where, like, technically speaking, they would have been fighting Cell, but, like, it's not it's separate universe type stuff. Comes to Earth, and he's like, hey, there's a gigantic threat. I need our king back. You're now the king. King Vegeta's gone. You were the prince. Let's go. We need your help. They go there, and Vegeta's like, bro, I got this. Let's, let's take care of it. So he goes there. Goku goes there, and then you see Broly when he has his blue hair. I'm sure you've seen that form, which to this day is not fully confirmed. That's just his normal form, but he has the blue hair. Um, and he sees Goku, Kakarot, and he gets pissed. And Goku's like, well, that's kind of weird. <laughs> huh. But then when they're all sleeping, Broly's like, yo, I'm going to go kill, like, a million people. You mind? Like, is, that, is that fine? Goes into this thing, and King Kai's like, yo, by the way, dude, Broly's, like, rampaging through this other universe. you got to figure out what's up. Yada yada. Broly comes back, starts fighting them, and then you see. I think what's what's good about this movie is the dichotomy of the characters, because realistically, normally Goku knows the bad guy. Well, Vegeta does too, but in this one, you have Vegeta being kind of like, "Whoa, bro, I can't, <laughs> I can't beat this." Normally, you got Vegeta always runs in there, gets his butt kicked. Goku saves the day. That's the standard, the general. Dragon Ball trope, right? Is that Vegeta goes in thinking, I can do anything. When in reality, Goku can do anything. Sadly. I like Vegeta a little bit more than I like Goku. We're not going to get that in this video. But, they go into this. They... <laughs> honestly get destroyed. <laughs> by Broly. Like, like, they get absolutely wrecked. By Super Saiyan Broly. Like, it's, it's, not, even like a, it's not even like a competition. Like... Vegeta was right. Broly's, he's not messing around, and he's going to kill them. And this is another movie, like The Return of Cooler. Roshi's just kind of there, and I love it. I'm like, yes, give me more Roshi. <laughs> Please. I like this. I like the side characters. Dragon Ball has always been so good about their side. Well, and bad. Yamcha, but it's fine. But very good and bad about their characters. They know when to play them at their strengths. I would argue Yamcha is probably the only exception that they just really never utilized. Regardless, they do it perfectly in this movie. Because you have all of them, they're again on a picnic. It's pretty pretty common in the Dragon Ball universe. Everybody, do you, wait, you don't go on a picnic? Bro, it's Friday afternoon. But what else are you going to do with your day? Sit on Twitter and rant about Dragon Ball Legends? No, you're going to go on a picnic. We all do that. Come on. I go on a picnic at least twice a week. I... The last week that I missed going on a picnic had to have been, like, 2015. Easily. It was, like, seven years ago, man. I go on a picnic every week. <laughs> In Dragon Ball, they do. So the movie, basically, it's just them getting destroyed. And then Goku absorbs their energy. It's a little bit of a tie-back to the Frieza type thing where Vegeta's like, Yo, you gotta, you gotta win, bro. I'm sorry. Take it. It's fine. You gotta win. Take my energy. Like... <laughs> And Goku just puts straight up a hole in Broly. And it's like, woo! Yeah, I don't care who you are. The end of Broly, well, the first Broly movie, is sick. We'll get to the second and the third one. But next up, we're talking about one of my favorites. Bojack Unbound. Bojack Unbound. By far, it's probably my top five. It's real hard for me to rank Dragon Ball because there's so much to the Dragon Ball IP, that it's very difficult for me to say what's up, what's down, what's good, what's bad, etc. Bojack Unbound, definitely like in my top five, for sure. And it's primarily because of the animation. It's not so much the plot point, which the plot point's good, but it's more or less because it just looks clean. It's why Wrath of the Dragon is my favorite movie as well. It's my overall favorite Dragon Ball movie, followed by DBS Broly. Let's talk about it. So, Bojack Unbound starts out. 
and they're having a tournament, right? You got a, a billionaire who's just set up this stuff. He has a kid who wants to see fighters from across the universe. So he basically is it hires, you know, yeah. He's just like, hey, here, come come fight in this tournament, you know? I'll give you a bunch of money if you win, right? You get a bunch of people, and you have Trunks again. I think Trunks in this movie is probably the cleanest part against Goku. I think it's just the cleanest point in the movie itself, but... Okay, so Trunks is a weird character for me because I love Trunks when he's fire. But I'm kind of okay on Trunks otherwise. I think in this movie, he really sells the point. So, remember, at this point... Vegeta is in his bit of like a why am I alive if Goku is so strong or why is Kakarot so strong like why am I alive phase that's where Vegeta's at right now so he doesn't want to fight he's not doing it it starts out again with the boy Krillin and Piccolo and Trunks and all this kind of stuff and it, the lead up is what you think it would be where it's like this isn't fair. <laughs> that is like Krillin and Yamcha and Tien. They're all going to get wrecked. <laughs> like, it's it's Trunks. It's, it's potentially Vegeta. He's not actually there. It's Gohan. Like, at this point, Goku's already dead. So, Goku's gone from the picture. So, as far as I know, this movie carries straight over from other stuff and whatever else. That's where Dragon Ball gets a little bit weird. Because you have your ins and outs where... Some things are straight up canonical and pass through. Some things don't pass through. Regardless. They're doing their tournament. They're winning all that kind of stuff. Whatever. Remember the end prize at this point. Mr. Satan is still the be all end all. Because he beat Cell. According to everybody on Earth. Like he won. He's the one that did it. So he's like the hero of everything. Not even just Earth at this point as far as I know. He's like the hero. So he's the be all end all. Who they want to fight. You get a bunch of money. They get past the preliminaries. There's some funny stuff where, like, fighters slip off Krillin's head. And then Piccolo's like, yeah, I'm not doing this. No thanks. Bye. And he dips. They go to, like, a secondary area to fight the next, like, fighters. And that's when this whole gang pops up. Bojack's gang shows up and takes on each of them. So you got Trunks versus Gokua. You got Krillin. You got all this stuff. They're all fighting all their kind of things, right? They're doing their stuff. And they're getting wrecked. <laughs> like they're getting destroyed and then gohan shows up comes in and at this point you gotta remember this is right after all the cell hype again that's where it's kind of taking from the anime but it's not really canonical it's kind of a weird point but you have gohan hops in and this is the first time he's gone super saiyan 2 at that point since cell and it takes it, it, it okay so it takes goku being dead goku's dead on king kai's planet and king kai's like yo when you blew my planet up by bringing Cell here, you release an ancient evil, a pirate, called Bojack. Bit of a, it, it's not the best plot point ever, but I can work with it. It's fine. It, it, it doesn't, like, bug me or anything. It's kind of like, well, King Kai, why did you have Bojack sealed in your planet? What else was sealed around here? You want to tell me what I might be accidentally releasing? It doesn't matter. Fine. So, Bojack gets released. Bojack unbound. He's now unbound. He's killing all these people. Doing all this kind of Zangyo, Beto, yada yada. All the side stuff. Right? Gohan goes Super Saiyan 2 and just straight up Molly Wops them. And you can definitely tell they were playing off the Cell arc whenever Gohan sort of split the Cell Juniors in half. You can tell they're playing off of that. 100%. Like, they're like, yep, let's make him go beast mode. Boom. Bit of a foreshadowing for uh, Super, you know superhero let's make him go beast mode absolutely destroys him bodies bojack but he only bodies bojack because gohan has always had that secondary personality like that sense of like he has this weird it's not a lack of confidence but it's an overwhelming i can't do it kind of vibe and then goku has to come in and tell him uh bro nobody else but you can do it and i like that i like that dynamic like, I think that dynamic is where a lot of the fans are always torn on Goku and Gohan having a good parent-child relationship. I think it's a big thing that they see it as, like, well, Goku's never there. And it's like, dude, Goku's there when Gohan needs it. Go, yes, fine, we're all, you know, whatever. Like, if my mom treated me like Goku, that would be terrible. 
<laughs> like, fine. But in Dragon Ball, I think it works just fine. And Goku, like, literally breaks reality. I mean, honestly. So he's dead. And Goku's like, nah, I'm going to save my son. Give me one sec. And he punches Bojack and tells Gohan, you need to get your stuff. No more cursing. You need to get your stuff together. Because you can do this, and nobody else can do this. Quite literally, nobody else alive can do this right now. Like, this is you, or it's nothing. Everybody's dead if you don't do this. And Gohan's like, I guess I'll do it. Thanks, Dad. No problem. And he wins. Again, this movie sells me more on the art. Bojack Unbound is one of the prettiest Dragon Ball movies by far. Like, it's just got some of the best graphics when it comes to Dragon Ball, just as a whole. And that continues for quite a few movies moving forward. Fusion Reborn, Wrath of the Dragon, they just have that, like, oof, kind of Dragon Ball art style. And I dig it. 9 out of 10. I can't give a movie 10 out of 10. I don't think at any point you're going to see me give a movie 10 out of 10. Because that means it's perfect. And with Dragon Ball, nothing's perfect. There's a lot of plot points. There's a lot of in-between. Actually, nothing is perfect. But you know what I mean. I think 9 out of 10 for me is going to be what I consider chef's kiss when it comes to Dragon Ball. Bojack Unbound, definitely a movie you need to watch. All right, we're now reaching the point where your boy is feeling it. If you've been around for like Wednesday streams, I'm sure you know this vibe. Again, your boy is feeling it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Dragon Ball Z, Broly, Second Coming, and Bio Broly. I can link these together finally. I can lump them together. It's going to be great. So, Second Coming. How Broly comes about sucks, but the ending is almost iconic in the Dragon Ball community. Not as iconic as going Super Saiyan and stuff like that, but it's very much iconic, right? So, Second Coming starts. Broly turns out when he got punched through the gut he was frozen some ice kept him alive he healed he's a he's a saiyan i guess it works fine again it kind of falls apart a little bit the story revolves around goten trunks and videl all looking for dragon balls and i'm okay with it that's fun i i actually like that videl got some screen time in a movie because i think she's actually a very good character and I think Videl is very slept on when it comes to Dragon Ball. Yeah, yeah, you got your weebs that are in love with her. Fine. Whatever. But I think she's very slept on as an actual character because it's beautifully written that <laughs> Hercule, Mr. Satan, gets credited for saving the Earth when we know it was Gohan. We watched it. And then Gohan, going through a weird transitionary period, going to high school, and he's kind of going through this different kind of experience falls in love with this girl who is strong and all this kind of stuff it, it, it's just very well written how it's gone down the, then she's the daughter of mr satan and then it ties back to chi chi likes videl a lot like it's just it, it's just really well done as an overall mechanic so i'm glad that videl's getting some kind of like screen time the worst part and I hate to say it, it's it's Goten and Trunks, because you don't get Gotenks, and that's kind of the, the peak of Goten and Trunks is getting Gotenks. Like, that's kind of what you want, right? Like, yeah, they're there, and they're cool. They're fine. I actually don't like Kid Trunks. He just always kind of irritated me. Goten has always been kind of fine. I think I have a bit of a nostalgia for Budokai 3, where I would use Goten to, like, body my friends because I couldn't actually punch him because he was so short, but it still looked like Goku. It's fun separate topic um the movie itself is very goofy and just kind of fun and very aloof and i'm fine with that i like that i like that they meet this random village that you got this guy who's a total snake oil salesman he's just conning everybody into believing he can see the future and all this kind of stuff but then it just gets saved and nothing gets resolved there by the way like that dude's just still making a bunch of money just like being their leader their shaman I like that. I do. When when go when, when Goten and Trunks are peeing, and they pee on Broly's head, it's stuff like that where it's like, all right, 
But the end where the Dragon Balls roll out and they summon Shenron and they wish their dad was there because Goku saves everything. For me, that just hits this weird, like, sweet spot of Dragon Ball, like, iconic type stuff. And everybody knows the family Kamehameha. So it was a big thing, the father-son Kamehameha was dope. Goten met Goku when he came back from the afterlife and they met and they had this great experience and I actually watched the video a lot on YouTube. It's awesome. But there's something about the family Kamehameha that, to me, it trumps the father-son one. Because it's it's little parts in Dragon Ball that are, like, beautifully written over, like, <laughs> over like a 20-year span. Like, I love it. I love that kind of stuff. And I think a lot of Dragon Ball fans resonate with that. And obviously, it just looks cool. Like, it's all three of them, and you got the... It, it's two of them, and you got the ghost Goku in the background just throwing it in. And, it, and it's, it's cool because it takes Goku to then do that. I just I just like it. It's just good. Bio Broly. Now, I'm not a hater of Bio Broly. The idea is fine. You have a billionaire. He found Broly's genes, his DNA. They're going to remake him. You got Goten. You got Trunks. You got 17. Well, 18. Not 17. You got... 18 you got all this kind of it, it, it has a makings a really good thing it's bio broly's design after he turns into like sludge that it's like yeah i mean the idea is there but half of dragon ball is i'm watching cool characters like they just look dope fight each other and it's like yeah okay i don't really want to watch a sludge monster so bio broly's fine um yeah I don't know how else to say that. Like, Bio Broly's fine. I think it's not really something. <laughs> like, it's fine. It's, it's fine. So, when it comes to the second, the like, Broly's second coming, 7 out of 10, strictly because a lot of the movie focused around Goten and Trunks. But I would say Videl should get more screen time because she's actually a good character. When it comes to Bio Broly, I, I will give that that first 5 out of 10. I don't hate it. It's still Dragon Ball. I actually liked that 18 got some screen time, but it's kind of just there. Like, I just, yeah, that's cool. <laughs> Sweet. You know, like, oh, wow. <laughs> I like that. That's great. That happened. That's kind of Bio Boy is like, that happened. Which a lot of trilogies go through that, so. That's where I stand with uh, Broly's Second Coming and Bio Broly. Fusion Reborn. The one that everybody talks about, kind of, ish, sometimes. It actually got like a theatrical release a couple years ago. And I will tell you, as somebody, okay, so I'm a big Gogeta fan. I love Vegito too. If you guys want a, if you guys want a video, by the way, me talking about Vegito versus Gogeta, I've thought about it for a long time. I'd love to make that video, even just talking about them. If you want that, smash that like button. Or hit that like button, or tap it. Well, I, don't, I don't care. Just hit the like button. Thanks. So, Fusion Reborn, when it went to theaters, it was kind of a crazy feeling. At that time, I was dating a girl, and we'd been together for a little while, and, like, she knew I loved Dragon Ball. She liked Dragon Ball, too. Not to the same extent, even close, obviously, but um, we went to go see that movie, and it was it was partnered with Bardock, which is weird, because if Bardock was said to label the movie, I, I would say that's one of my favorites, but regardless, Fusion Reborn... Probably stands as my number three. It probably goes DBS Broly, then it goes down to Wrath of the Dragon, and then it goes to Fusion Reborn, which ironically, Fusion Reborn, and then Wrath of the Dragon. That's what's up next. The reason the movie is really good, <laughs> there's a lot of reasons. Um, there's one character, portrayal, I'll say, animation, I don't think on YouTube I can say his name without YouTube being like, huh? What are you talking about? So we're going to leave it when we get to that point. But it starts out, right? Remember, at this point, Vegeta's dead. So hell is breaking over and you got a 16-year-old kid listening to music. That's another point that probably not my ideal thing. Janimba is technically born from some 16 year old that's like listening to music and he messes up and he unleashes all of hell on everybody number one in what point in the dragon ball universe 
do they decide let's have this one kid determine if everything just is gone because janimba fat janimba's funny and he's cool and i like that pycon's in this movie i actually like pycon a lot i think he's a cool character pecan if you've watched a couple different streams from dragon ball i think pycon is cool i like him and it's 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 done very well on how he gets underplayed but you also know how strong he is because Goku can go like super saiyan 3 at this point and he's like infinitely stronger whatever else so they go down to hell and they gotta fight this janimba that's the name that janimba gave himself nobody else named him that he literally said janimba and they were like that's his name janimba's a pokemon confirmed so janimba then transforms into this crazy version and by the way if he absorbed millions of like souls i feel like janimba would be absolutely cracked at this time he was it took goku and vegeta fusing as super saiyans like post boo arc to be this strong so at this point Janemba was powerful but like i feel like if he was in the super he would be like leagues above a lot of people either way Janemba comes around he's kind of toying with goku a little bit kind of body him and then he transforms and goku's getting wrecked destroyed and then vegeta shows up and i i'm not a gigantic fan of the convincing vegeta to fuse at this point like we've gotten to the point now where it's like Vegeta, like, just, just fuse them, bro. Like, can we just, can we just, please? This is, this is to me the start of like, please. And then you got probably, and then you got all these other movies. It's like, just, just fuse with him, Vegeta, please. Either way, so he fuses with him. They become Gogeta, and they just instantly win. <laughs> like, like, I think that's the biggest problem people have with Fusion Reborn, is that they just instantly win, and for legitimately like twenty years, all we knew of Gogeta was that yeah he's here <laughs> and he won he was here for five minutes not even not even and he wins and i love it i think everything about it's dope i think vegeta has a better design than hmm. i just think gogeta has a better design than vegeta i say that and i don't actually think that i actually don't i like both their designs because they're so different i think gogeta's design being so different then both Vegeta and Goku is what sets Gogeta apart for me. Because Vegeta looks cool as hell too, but it's just so vastly different with Gogeta. Gogeta. I, the alcohol is setting in. With Gogeta, I think that's why I like him more. I'm discovering why I'm a Gogeta fan. It, it's also like the everybody likes Vegeta. Uh, we all know we like that. Come on. So Fusion Reborn for me. I have to give it like a 9 out of 10. But realistically, I would say as a movie, it's a 7 to 8 out of 10. Strictly because the main character that wins everything is only there for like 3 or 4 minutes. Like the, the fusion being reborn isn't there that long. There's there's a bunch of side plots with people coming back from hell. Uh, Nappa and all this kind of stuff. Like I, I wish Nappa was there. GT, but... You have like all these different things. Goten and Trunks are fighting a certain uh, leader from the 1940s, uh, who 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 didn't do nice things and very well known. And to me, it was it was weird to see that on the big screen <laughs> because you know Super Saiyans have blue eyes, blonde hair. What does that match? Again, I'm pretty sure on YouTube I can't say this stuff without getting demonetized. So I think you can kind of read between the lines. And if you've seen the movie, you definitely know who I'm talking about. And it's stuff like that that I think makes Fusion Reborn awesome. Watch it. Love it. But don't expect to see Gogeta for longer than like five minutes if even that like it, it's quite literally like a minute like it's like hey we're gogeta you're dead i do like the end when vegeta fades off and he calls goku a friend and it's like <laughs> it's like it's like a, it's like a moment you're like oh my god they're actually friends bro i knew it i knew it i knew it i love it i do like that that's stupid stuff in dragon ball bro 
that's where like Dragon Ball's canon is horrible. But the little tiny stuff like that, I love it. And I'm never not gonna love it. Okay, what's the next movie? A hero trapped in a music box warns the Z Fighters about an approaching evil beast who wants to stop them. Kind of a joke, also kind of not. Uh, your boy is slightly, uh, slightly blasted right now when it comes to the alcohol vibes. Uh, Wrath of the Dragon. Now, this is my favorite Dragon Ball movie. So if there's one I'm gonna talk about, it's this one. There's a multitude of reasons why I would consider Wrath of the Dragon my favorite. Number one, I think animation-wise, Dragon Ball Z had hit its peak at this one because there's a lot of peaks throughout Dragon Ball. For me, Wrath of the Dragon looks the best. Now, when it comes to the characters that are in it, yes and no. You have Gotenks, which I'm always a fan of. Never gonna hate Gotenks. Before Ryuden stole it from me, I was a Super Saiyan 3 stan. He can have it. It's his. That's fine. But I always really liked Super Saiyan 3. There's just something about it. Super Saiyan 4 nowadays has taken it over as I've gotten older. Just because Super Saiyan 4, like what it is, is just cooler to me. The problem is GT is not cooler than Z, and that's a whole separate topic. But I think Super Saiyan 4 for me is probably my favorite form, but like 3 is like. It's like this between the two, right? Like, it's barely different. The actual movie itself. So, I also love Tapion. I think Tapion's a cool character. Because you actually get his backstory. A lot of movies, you don't get that backstory, or there's no backstory, or they just say one sentence. So, like, take Bojack. They're like, yeah, he was locked in my planet. Can I see when he was locked in your planet? They're like, no, nah, no, he was, no, he was, he was just, he was locked there. Like he was, he was, da he was dangerous. Just take our word for it. <laughs> it's like, all right, I guess I, I, I'll, I'll take your word for it. Fine. With Tapion, you get to see it with his brother Minosha. You get to see that dynamic that they had, that was good, and then it leads to Tapion with Trunks. It's just, it's, it's, it's really good in that sense. Hoy. He's a little lacking in a lot of ways. Hoy is just there. I mean, yeah, he wants to, you know, jump off this building and then he gets saved. And he's mad he got saved, but he's not actually mad because he was trying to lure them into a false insecurity. You have a mystery box. It involves Bulma. To me, Wrath of the Dragon just kind of does everything you need. It shows you everything that you need to see and you go from there. Right, you have Tapion is randomly just pops out of his music box, becomes it, I, this movie likes it, it makes me like Trunks, like it makes me like Trunks, Kid Trunks. I like Trunks, Kid Trunks. I'm just not a fan of Kid Trunks. Never have been. He just irritates me. I'm sorry if that irritates you. I love Trunks when he's at his peak, but Kid Trunks is not it for me. Like he just he just oh no, it, we're not different video. We're not gonna get into that right now. I think Wrath of the Dragon is definitely my favorite movie. And I think it's because it just works. It just works. The ending is a little bit forced, but also kind of not. Because when we saw Gotenks go Super Saiyan 3, and he does all this kind of stuff, and he's really strong in the anime, whatever else, it was always kind of established that Goku just knows how to fight. He's just better at it. And Gotenks is always been cocky, that kind of stuff. When Goku goes Super Saiyan 3, he's not messing around. Like, that's always been the thing in Dragon Ball. When he has that transformation, it's going down. Like, it's going down. Super Saiyan 3, God Form. Uh, Super Saiyan Blue, Super Saiyan 4, Super Saiyan uh, Ultra Instinct, all stuff. When that happens, it's going down. And, like, you're not going to stop it from going down. Goku's going to win. And I like that. And it is relatively iconic, whether or not if you want to acknowledge it, it is. When he wins and he's just... And it's like, yeah, I like that. I like that. It's good. Harutagarn is cool because it's... It... It does... It, 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 it's the standard Dragon Ball stuff where... It's this ancient evil then. 
you know, used to wreck the universe. Which, by the way, if Haruna Garden was around a thousand years ago, I don't know if Goku and Vegeta, like, are stronger or, like, infinitely stronger than their previous. Maybe Yamoshi was actually the strongest Saiyan. I don't know. But, like, Haruna Garden getting embodied by Super Saiyan 3, it's like, well... Technically speaking, in the Dragon Ball space, Harutagarn's nothing. But I like it. I like it because it also involves Gohan being Super Saiyan, uh, 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 Great Saiyan Man, Great Saiyan Man 2, and it shows their dynamic. For me, it just has everything a Dragon Ball movie could want to have. I just like it. And on top of that, it just looks so nice. I can overlook a lot of aesthetics. Like, I can go back and I can watch, like, original Dragon Ball, like, Dragon Ball Z... And I love it. You can see where the rock is going to break out of the mountain and stuff. But I like that. Like, I'm fine with that. But for me, Fusion Reborn, Wrath of Dragon. Ugh. They're just peak animation. And I've said it multiple times on Twitter. That Twitter.com slash If you want to follow me. It's just so good. It genuinely is my favorite movie. And even just thinking about it, I get hyped and I want to watch it. And that's how I know it's my favorite movie. Like, when I think about Wrath of the Dragon, I just want to watch it. <laughs> I'm like, all right, I got to, I, hold on. I got to cut this video short. I got to watch it real quick. Like, that's, that's how I know that it's my favorite movie. Definitely. I'll say 10 out of 10. All right, let's keep it real, bros. Your boys, like, 15 shots in. Okay. When I undertook this ordeal, I knew what I was getting myself into. Like I, I, I'm, I'm fully aware. Uh, that's fine. Like, you've been through Wednesday streams. We've been here before. That's fine. But when it comes to the Dragon Ball Super movies, bro, your boy's putting it together. <laughs> we got Battle of Gods with Rection. Resurrection. I'm not sure what a... If you have a res... Uh, erection. Erection. With an R. Get that checked out. But either way. Battle of Gods. Resurrection of F. They're together. Battle of Gods. That is when Dragon Ball kicked off again. I, I cannot tell you what it was like to walk into a GameStop and buy Xenoverse. And then a couple years later, you had, like, Battle of Z, a couple other games. That, but Xenoverse was, like, the main one. And I remember that coming out, and I was like, ooh, I'm down. I'm, I'm really down. Got that game, played a bit, and I was like, this feels good. This feels really, It just feels nice to play Dragon Ball. Bro. <laughs> when Battle of Gods came out, I remember showing my buddy Aaron. Like, we were hanging out, we were just kicking it, and I was like, did you get to watch this movie, man? Like... You, you gotta watch this movie. And nowadays, it doesn't hold up as well, to be honest with you. Like, Battle of Gods has slightly fallen off-ish. But it's only because, like, I'm a Dragon Ball YouTuber. Like, it's only because I have such a critical view of Dragon Ball. That's why Battle of Gods fell off, quote-unquote, for me. As a movie, it's good. Like, it starts out, Goku gets wrecked out of nowhere. So, King Kai is randomly like, yo, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're telling me Beerus is around? Like, oh, I, I I have a cat named Beerus, and his brother is named Shampa. I actually do. Like, I'm not even lying to you. Follow me on Twitter. You can see them. I have a cat named Beerus and a cat named Shampa because of how much Super brought it back. Now, it was rough because the anime chose to take Battle of Gods and make that the first 20 episodes and chose to take Resurrection of F as the second, like, 20 to 30 episodes. I'm not a fan of that. Like, yeah, it's not the worst thing ever, but if I'm going to tell you what I want to see from Dragon Ball, I don't want to see what I just watched in a movie. It's always kind of rubbed me the wrong way. It is what it is. Battle of Gods sells phenomenal. Like, you have Gotenks, you have Krillin, you have Yamcha, you have Bulma, you have all these things. I'm not a big fan of Pilaf, 
being there, getting the Dragon Balls. It's it's an okay subplot. Like it kind of sets up like Trunks a little bit with my to lead into the Goku Black stuff. Like it, that's fine. I'm down for all that kind of stuff. It's played off well when they fire a gun, and it's like it uh, peel off. Wait, this is not Kid Goku. Like what, what's going on here, man? You. you that you could, like beat them with a gun like I, they, okay fine but it bounces off of gohan goes to videl you got dende healing videl who says yeah just by the way i don't do you know there's a child inside of you like <laughs> are you aware and she's like yeah i know yeah and i like that i'm okay with it that's fine it's a little bit cheesy when it comes to him turning into a god and you have all the sayings around you have to have a bunch of pure-hearted Saiyans. It gets standard Dragon Ball in that sense. Standard anime, honestly. But Battle of Gods as a whole is really good. Like, it's really good because when it came out, it kind of symbolized, like, Dragon Ball coming back. And that was a big thing. Nowadays, it might feel normal if you're just, like, a fan of Dragon Ball. It probably just feels normal. It's like, yeah. Uh, duh, Goku's a god. There was like a 20 year gap <laughs> between Dragon Ball being around and Dragon Ball not being around. Like there was like a, there was like a huge gap between that. So when Battle of Gods came out, it symbolized like you can totally like bring this back. And now Dragon Ball is huge again. And that's crazy. That's why when people like, talk crap on Dragon Ball, I don't really look too much at it because it's like Dragon Ball fans get why we love Dragon Ball and non-Dragon Ball fans it it's kind of just like yeah yeah I know it I know it, I, I know it's bad it's not well written okay this is dope I love it <laughs> Like, that's, that's quite literally what it symbolizes. So, Battle of Gods gets a solid 8 out of 10 from me. I... Pff, bro, totally forgot that I was ranking them together. Rex Russian of F. Um, Rex Russian of F. Like, we're, we're now at the point. Your boy is absolutely body bagged. It's, it's 1.37 in the morning. I started at 9 p.m. Uh, Resurrection of F. So it's really good. The CGI is terrible. And I think a lot of people were nervous about Superhero. Not only because of Resurrection of F. Because of DBS Broly. Obviously, we had Gogeta. Whatever. Fine. Goku and Vegeta fighting. But it's really bad. And it's very jarring and very noticeable. I'm okay with it. Because... It feels nostalgic, but I can see how somebody wouldn't like Resurrection of F, but I can see how somebody would like Golden Frieza. I think Golden Frieza is great. I... I don't... I touched on it when we talked about Frieza before, that he's like a prodigy, right? Like, he's like... He's like meant to be powerful. And I like that. It's a little bit ridiculous that even his cronies, or like his guys that are at his side, are that powerful too. Like, th realistically, they would not be that powerful. <laughs> like, honestly, they wouldn't be that powerful. But I'm okay with it. I like it. It's fine. I don't mind. Resurrection of F is good, but don't expect too much from it. It's not Battle of Gods, by any means. Like, it, it, it's playing off of Battle of Gods because then all of a sudden, like, you know, the anime was like, oh, Goku mastered being a god. And that's what Super Saiyan Blue is. And then going beyond mastering is Ultra Instinct. And I'm okay with that. The ending, Vegeta should have gotten the W. We've said that forever with uh, it's Super, like, Z, whatever. Vegeta should always get the win, but he never does. It happens. Resident F gets a solid 6 out of 10. Strictly because the animation, when it's CGI, is... It, it's noticeable. Like, in Broly, I can get past it because it's like, okay, well, I can see it, but 
I'm still engrossed, and you know they're chanting Gogeta. In Resurrection F, it's like ugh, that's a rough one. That's a rough one. All right, bro. Yeah, <laughs> I knew what I was undertaking when I took on this video, and I was like, bro, this is a good idea. I, I'm gonna tell you right now, this was gonna be two parts, and then I randomly decided at the last second, eh, I'm good. Uh, you, you, your boy is kind of good right now. So, Dragon Ball Super Broly. Uh, what else can I say besides, it's a great movie. It actually really is. Like, a lot of people, actually, okay, so, like, realistically, nobody sleeps on Broly. But a lot of people sleep on the, like, animations because of the CGI. But when Vegeta's fighting Broly, and he's just, like, He's like not taking it very serious and then it shifts to like he's taking it very serious. It's like as a Dragon Ball fan, it's like, yeah, that he gets it, bro. He's doing it. I like that. I'm a big fan of that kind of like uh I like the dynamic, I guess. I like the It's a tie back to the OG Broly, but it's like flipped. You know, it's like, it's like flip, whatever, you get it. So, the OG Broly, like, the moment Broly powered up, Vegeta was like, oh. Oh, oh, I'm screwed. And then this one, Vegeta has the power, and then he gets wrecked. And he's like, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> like, it, it, it's taken the dynamic and flipped it. I like that. Obviously, I like... I like all the graphics. The CGI is a little bit jarring, but it's not too bad. Nowhere near Resurrection of F. Like it's it, it's nowhere near that. Like I'm I'm definitely a fan of it for sure. Um, Gogeta coming back. I already talked about it. Gogeta is like one of the goats. Well, not one of the goats. He is the goat. Uh, greatest of all time would mean. Uh, you get it. I'm a, I'm 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 a tad bit uh, gone right now, so apologize if I'm uh, lackluster on my commentary. Broly's phenomenal. Definitely a movie I, re I I recommend for sure. Eight out of ten. Um, what else can I say about Broly? Originally, I wasn't the biggest fan of Broly coming back. Like I really didn't think it was going to be that great. I was like, okay. Like, I remember I was definitely one of the guys when Goku's like jumping up and down. He's like in the trailer and stuff. I definitely thought it was going to be Yamoshi who's going to pop out of nowhere. And they were going to like start this whole other thing. And then it was like, oh, that's Broly. Okay. I was very skeptical until I watched it. But DBS Broly has become one of my favorite movies for sure. Like, no doubt. We're going to get into Superhero. Now, I watch Superhero in like 140p. No, it was like, it was like, it was like, it was pretty, like 420p. It, it was decent quality. Uh, in a theater, you could definitely tell it was like somebody with a camera like, hey. You could definitely tell, right? Um, I liked it though. I really did. Somebody put a subbed version on YouTube. I watched that after I watched the original. I'm not a gigantic fan of how they did Cell in Superhero. Because you have, like, like Cell is quite literally the smartest, next to Frieza, uh, villains. Like, that's his entire arc, right? Like, that... Actually, okay, so like, they all kind of go through their own kind of thing. But either way... Cell is, like, meant to be a perfect being. But in this one, they didn't give you Cell perfect. Like, they gave you uh, Cell Max. I'm like, yeah, it's fine. He got broken out early. You know, he wasn't done preparing, whatever else. I liked the movie. I really did. And I liked how much it focused on Gohan and Piccolo. But I feel like it took a little bit too much focusing on Gohan and Piccolo. 
Like, I feel like it was just a little bit too like, ah, this is what the fans want. It was like, ah, oh. yeah, we do, but okay. But at the end of the day, I liked it. Uh, I'll give a 7 out of 10 to Superhero. I haven't seen it in English. When I see it in English, that will 100% determine. Uh, I'm going to say, your boy is out. This has been like an hour and a half long video. Your boy is done. Uh, if you watch this video, if you're this far in, bro, props to you. Leave a like. Subscribe. I got to sleep. Because it is. It is. 2.59 in the morning. And your boy is gone. <laughs> Peace. Thank you so much. If you follow me on Twitter, you probably saw some like wild posts. Like, thank you.